You must get a lot of reading done here. Oh, hi. I hope I haven't stopped you at a crucial moment. Oh, no. I remember back in school when I worked in the bookstore. If I really got into something, I would go hide in the back room so I could finish a chapter without getting interrupted. We don't have a much of a back room here. You don't seem to have much business either. How are things going? Fine. Fine. Well, we're well stocked on all your books. I mean, we do our best to keep neighborhood authors prominently displayed. See, you're still out there. Yeah. Looks a little yellow, doesn't it? But I'm going to have to, but I'm going to have something coming out in the fall. I'll give you plenty of advance notice on it, in case you want to do something special with the window. I'm sure we will. Can I help you with anything today? I came in for the Paris Review. Not in yet. Yes, I've noticed. Sorry to have interrupted your reading. No problem. I've read it before. Oh? Second reads can be the sweetest. Like, lots of things on the second tasting. What is it? Actually, it's my third read. This is called an adrenaline to the ego. My <laughs> god, your third! It's not that good. Oh, it is. It, it is. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm all mush mouth. I, I don't know what I to say. Can I sign it for you? You already have. I got it the day you were here signing books. The day that it came out? But there's no inscription. That won't do. Please forgive me, I, I've forgotten your name. Isabel Grossman. Izzy, mostly. <laughs> Izzy? I, I like it. My god, I can't think straight. I'm so swooning from your compliment. Okay, let's see. Thanks, Mr. Moss. Uh, Tyler, please. Thanks, Ty. Just Tyler. My deepest pleasure. <laughs> to Izzy, a reader's devotion is a writer's nourishment. Thanks for the meal, always. Tyler Moss. I like a quiet girl. That's nice. And, and soft-spoken, too. That's some bubby you got. Yeah. He's a quirker. Yeah. You come to visit every Sunday? Yeah. I think she loves you very much. Listen. Yeah? I didn't have anything to do with this. It wasn't my idea. Well, you feel funny, huh? This isn't the way I live. This isn't the way I do things. How do you live? Well, for one thing, I don't live down here. Yes? I live uptown. Is that right? Yes, and emotionally, sociologically, I'm a million miles from here. This isn't your style. This isn't my style. Sometimes you change your style. You don't understand. Sometimes you put on a new hat, you become a new person. Look, I'm sorry you had to go through all of this, but when my bubby wants something... Hey, I, I have a friend, Harry Shipman. Shipman Imports, locks, caviar, f fancy stuff. For years he wore the same kind of hat. A little brown cat, the brim you pulled down, you wondered how he could see. Well, one day, he's crossing Delancey, a big one comes, poof, it's gone. He runs after it, but it's too late. A truck gets over there before he does. He comes into me crying, he feels so bad. I said, Harry, Harry, I said, here, here's a present from me to you. Take five dollars, go across to Finkel, buy yourself a new one, something special, from me to you. But do me a favor, forget the brown cat. Well, he goes, he picks out, he comes back an hour later. He's a new man, a gray felt Stetson, a beauty. <laughs> the next day, he makes an engagement. To be married? That's right. Between you and me, he must have given some Nova on the side. And that's no $5 hat. A man trades some lock for a Stetson and gets a bride in the bargain? Very oh. romantic. Last night, I got my nerve up and called. I got his unlisted home number from the files at the store. Well, that was the easy part. The hard part was figuring out what I would say. I wanted to catch him off guard, but not sound too kooky or desperate. I wanted to peel back the careful layers of polite conversation and let him say what I hoped was really on his mind, in his heart. In other words, this was to be an ambush. <sighs> Hello. Tyler? Yes. Izzy. I, I beg your pardon? 
Izzy Grossman. Isabel Grossman from New Day Books. The girl at the downstairs counter who sometimes wears contacts and sometimes wears glasses. Uh, who tripped as you were coming into the store this week? Who's read Free Fall more times than you want to know? Oh, yes, yes. Isabel. Or, or Izzy. Izzy, yes. <laughs> well, uh, what's up? Uh, am I in terrible debt over there? I, I know I owe you some money, but isn't this kind of a bad form? Calling folks at 10 o'clock at night to collect bills? You know I'm good for it. Oh, I I'm not calling on store business. Oh? I'm calling to give you a chance to express yourself more freely outside the confines of our formal friendship. <laughs> I didn't realize we had a formal friendship. <sighs> the workaday world does frame a contact. I, I want to give you a chance to crawl out of that frame. Well, right now I just crawled out of the shower and I'm standing here dripping. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am also working pretty furiously on a review that's due next week, so my time is kind of tight. But if you like, maybe one day I could take you out for a coffee and you can interview me. What is this for? A graduate thesis? No. It's just something I'm doing on my own. Oh, small magazine. Straight Q&A, I hope. Listen, I'll drop by next week. We'll set up a time. You can bring a small tape recorder, then prepare the unedited transcript. I get the final edit. Those are my conditions, okay? Yeah, that's great. Do I see what I think I see? Has our little Miss Izzy Goldman Bird Grossman? Uh, has our little Miss Isabel Grossman been transformed into the image of Grace Kelly at her dewiest? You look gorgeous. Thanks. You've been hiding all this from your bookstore, book buying public. Your book buying public. Ah, uh, she's fast <laughs> too. Come, we must have a drink. You must let me buy you a drink. When are you done here? Six, but I really... Uh, good. We shall. Where shall we go? You name it. I'd love to. I'd really love to. But I can't. Uh, Not you're, tonight. You're a complete mystery to me, my girl. You call me up, badger me for weeks about this interview. I... I didn't badger. Badger! And now, here I am, presenting myself to you for the occasion. You say, frig off. Not frig off. Just that I have an obligation. What kind of obligation? Who is this obligation? It's a dinner thing. A dinner thing. You're blowing an opportunity that in all likelihood will never come your way again for a dinner thing? Where is your wisdom in that, Miss Grossman? I don't have any choice. You always have choices, Izzy. When you stop seeing them, you're in real trouble. Couldn't we do this tomorrow? There are no tomorrows. There is only the moment, and it wants to be seized. Are you pressuring me? I most certainly am. Ah, <laughs> oh, relax. Let's just have a drink, and you can scoot. Keep them waiting, Izzy. They like to be kept waiting. Hold still. You're killing me. You want me to do it? You don't have to kill me. Just hold still. One more. Owie! Okay. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. You sure? Yeah. Be sure. You want me to run around like an old lady with a beard? <laughs> well, I do see a few more. Little ones. So? You want me to do them? What else? Pull, pull. Just two more. Ah, oh, you're killing me. How do I look? Beautiful. <laughs> That's my Bubby. I visit her every Sunday. She sits in her special place, on her stool by the window. Her window. I stand beside her, looking out at the East River below. She rubs my back and she holds me. I listen to her breathe. I love the smell of coffee on her breath. Bubby? Vas! Listen to this one. I'm in the ocean and the water has a funny color. Maybe pink or something. Maybe like somebody bled there recently. And I'm standing up, not swimming, not floating. I'm standing up, and, and it's up to here on me. And the next thing I know, the water level drops way down to here. It's good luck. What is good luck? But what happens next is 
I walk out towards the beach. And when I turn around and, and look back, the ocean, it, it's all red. This deep, deep red. Red's a very lucky color. It's good. It's good. You're going to find money.